giving absolutely nothing <laughs> away while saying what Chelsea fans want to hear. It's a real art uh, to being interviewed, and Ezan Hazard seemed to have perfected it. Looks like he's almost perfected what he's, he's trying to do on the pitch as well, he's, isn't he, Danny? He's an incredible player. I think he's 27 years of age. I personally don't think he's hit his peak yet. Um, and people talk about, I've I, I seen something earlier on today when people, people are saying, well, Chelsea are going to offer him a contract, make him the highest paid player. Players like Hazard, it doesn't come down to money. You know, he, he, if he was to stop playing Don't now... Turn it down, though, would no, you? No, <laughs> you're not going to turn it down. But what I'm saying is, is, is for example, you, you have a Robin Van Persie situation. When he was at Arsenal, he had the opportunity to go to Manchester City or Manchester United. Manchester City were offering him a lot more money. But he wanted to go somewhere where he could win silverware. He won the silverware in his first season. So from Hazard's perspective, he's probably looking and think, right, OK, what can make me an even better player? Is it going to be staying at Chelsea under Sarri, where we've got some fantastic players and hopefully some more coming in? Or is it to go to a club like Real Madrid where you're going to be challenging for the Champions League? You know, he'll have expectations of getting individual honours as well. So, yes, we talk about the money, you know, it can be unbelievable, the money that they're offered. But when you get to a player of that standard who's earning the money that he's earning and is going to earn a lot of money, whatever he does, it all comes down to success. Where's he going to win trophies? Where's he going to have the biggest opportunity to, to win them honours? The only place, I, I just don't see him going anywhere else in England. Mm, no. I don't think he's going to leave Chelsea for any other club in this country. The only club he'd go to is Real Madrid, I, th I would mm. think, because he's already said about, you know, being as a kid, that's what he dreamt of. He wanted mm. to play in, in, in the Spanish league. He wanted to play at Real Madrid. And, you know, th there are, are only a handful of clubs that could take him away from, from Chelsea, and, and one of them would be Real Madrid. Mm. Um, but for Chelsea, I, I think this season's a key one for him in terms of his making his mind up. You know, whether or not he then thinks, you know what, I can't fulfil everything here. It all depends on how this season goes. But you can see the way he's performing so far, the way that Chelsea are playing, he's really enjoying his football. You know, he's looking fitter and sharper than he's ever, ever looked. And I think the penny's dropped in terms of him realising that he's only, t you know, sort of touching the, the levels that he can get to. He can go so much higher but he knows he has to do the work. And I think he's starting to realise that now. In the last couple of seasons, he's fitter. He's getting stronger. The World Cup, he was, he was brilliant. This start of the season, he's been brilliant. So the progression for him is only upwards, so long as he does the hard work. Numerically and statistically, you can see what Eden Hazard has, has brought to Chelsea mm. this season, or has, has given to Chelsea this season, rather. Um, is he the most influential player in the Premier League at the moment? I would probably say, yeah. He's a top goal scorer in the Premier League, obviously not, not a centre forward. Um, I think he has, has assists as well. But what he does, he's, he's one of these players that no matter who plays against Chelsea, he requires two or three players around him. So then it's up to the players around him, the intelligence of the other players to say, right, OK, if Hazard has two or three players that are trying to stop him, then that means there's going to be space somewhere, out, somewhere on the pitch. And the one thing I've always said when you play against world-class players is... What, kick him? <laughs> well, I tried to, got no way near him, so I had to stop that. He would just step back or get someone else to mark him. Get my winger to come back and mark him. But more often than not, it was when you saw world-class players, the sign of a world-class player is what they did to players around them. And when Hazard is on the pitch for Chelsea, everybody else is probably 10, 15, 20% better. And that is the key sign of a top world-class player. They, they don't only stand out themselves, but they bring the best out in the players around them. And he does that continuously. Are we seeing that with Giroud, do you think? Yeah, listen, Giroud, Giroud, when you look at the World Cup, I mean, I, I thought he was outstanding. Mm. Um, yes, he's a world champion. Famously didn't score a goal Absolutely. in the World Cup. But you know so what? He's... what? His impact in the French side was, was yeah. incredible. I, I, you know, I watched him against Australia, of course, and he came on in that game and he turned the game around. Just his movement, his presence, his stretching the defence, and you could argue and say it was against Australia. But that was the <laughs> beginning. And that's where he just got better and better throughout the tournament. Mm -hmm. And a lot was said about not getting a shot on target, not scoring a goal. But his contribution to the team is phenomenal. And he's carried that on now with Chelsea. And Surrey's identified it. He's, at the beginning of the season, he chopped and changed a little bit, yeah. but realised having Giroud in your side, you automatically become such a better side. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think he's underestimated at times, you know, how important he is to the side and, and what he contributes to the team. He, he's joint assists. A joint uh, head of the assists in the Premier League. We talk about separating defence and midfield. So if you've got Jorginho playing deep, we talk about central midfielders wanting to try and stop him. That gap then occurs between the midfield and the defence. So if Giroud's dropping off, if you're a centre-back, you have two options. You can leave him, but if you do, he's going to turn and then pick the pass. But then the other option is, OK, well, I'll go with him, as we've seen on a number of occasions this season. The centre-back goes with him. 
all of a sudden there's a huge gap between, say, the right-sided centre-back and the left-back, and the gap is huge. And that's where the likes of Pedro, Willian, Hazard, they then get into them spaces. And that's what you're talking about, the selfless players that are playing for Chelsea and the movement off the ball, and it's absolutely brilliant. And Giroud and Hazard, I think it was his debut. I remember watching him against West Brom, I think he was in January, and it was instant between him and Hazard. He's great at pinning the defence down, so he, he can get a position as well. Not only does he come short, he's great at just sitting back and, and almost sitting on the defender and going, right, you're not getting around me. Ball to feet, layoffs. The amount of times you see him inside the box do that, you know, just lays off. Uh, and he's, he's, like Danny's saying, he's such a self, you know, selfless sort of player. I think that's what separates him and Morata. Because Morata is, is a centre forward that likes to stretch the game, but he's not creating space in behind. Characteristics very different, but in terms of their style of play, Diego Costa and Giroud very similar. Both love to drop deep, and there's no surprise that's when Hazard has it, had a very fruitful season with Diego Costa when they won the Premier League. You know, he was getting into all their areas all the time, and Giroud's doing exactly the same thing for him. And just to go back to the point that Mark made, you talked about the selflessness of the, yeah. the Chelsea players, but it's down to Sarri to, to spot what their strengths are and to be able to, to exploit that for the good of the team, isn't it? It, it is, 100 per cent, but I think also as a player, players especially going forward, you want, to, you want to be the one that's getting the glory at times. There's only one centre forward that I've ever heard of that actually appreciates and, and actually prefers assisting and scoring goals, and that was Ibrahimovic. You know, that was something that, that, that was said a long time ago. So to get them on board is in terms of it's not about you, it's about the team and then we all win collectively. That's something that Sarri's done. We saw what he did at Napoli, the way he changes players as well. He turned Mertens from a, from a right winger into a false number nine and you can see him developing different players now within that Chelsea team that 12 months ago we'd have looked at and gone, they're not right for that position, but he's solving the puzzle. But he's, he's evolved, isn't he, Giroud as well? Because yes. his goal-scoring record at Arsenal mm. per, per game was, was up there, was, it was yeah. a good record. So since he's come to Chelsea, the goals have dried up. However, his influence in the game, I think, has, has increased dramatically. 